Hello everybody and welcome to game two in this best of three match for the G-Force Pro-Am qualifier rounds. And we have here spawning as the Blue Terran once again, Mavagens, which is just code for Slayers MMA, a Code S South Korean player, a member of Boxers Team Slayers. And his opponent spawning as the Red Zerg is ATN Dark Force, playing of course for Team Alternate. And uh, the map is going to be Shakura's Plateau, but don't be fooled. This is not the latter version of the map, which can be evidenced by the fact that there is a neutral supply depot hanging out at the bottom of the ramp, which means that Dark Force is going to be fairly confident that he is not going to get boxed in by, say, a bunker and a supply depot from his Terran opponent. Um, I have to agree with the including of this um, neutral supply depot at the bottom of ramps. I think that getting blocked in by uh, a Protoss or a Terran player for a Zerg is both extremely frustrating and very, very difficult to deal with relative to the amount of effort it takes to execute. And um, it's true that there is currently a, a way for a Zerg player to group up all their um, drones by rallying into this mineral patch over here and then very quickly attacking the bunker or the uh, supply depot or the pylon. Check out Psy Starcraft's tutorial on this in order to get more details. It is innovative and it is revolutionary and it is very awesome and it will help all of you ladder players that are getting extremely frustrated by that style of play. In the meantime, enough about all of the uh, metagame nonsense, enough about special tactics. We are going to see two Raxes coming down for MMA. He's either going to use this for some early aggression or simply to secure his natural, or maybe he will use it for both. There's no gas going down, so he's going to have plenty of minerals to produce SCVs, Marines, and Command Centers, and Dark Force is going to come over here. He's going to spot these two Barracks coming down, get a little bit of harassment on this SCV, but I think that this harassment is going to be short-lived. we got the other one drilling away, drilling to town, going all over the place. There's tons of holes in that drone right now, and he has to run away, get the hell out of town and we have a hatchery going down for Dark Force with the spawning pool and extractor. He wants to get his speedlings out, he wants to get his banelings out, and he wants to get his zerglings out right away with his queens to cover this um, fast expansion in order to get his economy going. He wants to feel safe, but we have a Marine coming out for MMA. We got his second uh, barracks sitting here, just chilling out, not really doing anything. Orbital Command is up, not producing any Marines, just one coming out here. There's the Marine, so it looks like a little bit of a delay on that. But we have this hatchery almost finished and a couple of drones down here with the SCV. We'll see if he goes to go set up any bunker. We'll get some support from his marine pal. His drone's forced to run away. Run, drone, run. Don't get destroyed. More drones are transferring down and we'll see what happens here. And these drones are going to chase away this marine. This one drone is going to chase away this SCV. There's going to be no bunkers, no early aggression. And the nice thing about this two racks opening is it can operate as just a very effective feint. It can go into one of two things, but a Zerg player is forced to be ready for a two racks pressure because two racks pressure, all those Marines can simply end the game right then and there. And now look at this. Marines, four Marines hanging out on this watchtower, stutter stepping around, doing a ton of damage to these Zerglings. They are just dancing around that zone of the watchtower, and this is incredible. Look at all that. Zergling cannot keep up, and there's another one. One Marine left, killing so many Zerglings. Another Zergling goes down. Oh man, that was ridiculous. Those four. Marines almost paid for themselves. Zerg has only lost a little bit less where that should have been a easy pickup for Dark Force. Instead, he is going to have to reproduce Zerglings. And we have some coming in running in here, but no, a third uh, barracks is going to block out the ramp. And these Zerglings are not going to be able to break in here. Not even going to be able to get hold of that SCB as it's hiding inside the barracks as it constructs. And, uh, box, er, and um, MMA is just doing great. He's hanging out. He's got his uh, second base going down. He's got his natural being built. He's got his gases coming up. He's got his factory going down. And he's just pumping out Marines like nobody's business. We will see if it's going to be a similar strategy to last game where he went with a lot of medevacs, Marines, and siege tanks. And we have Dark Force over here. Speed nearly finished. He has pulled all of his drones off of gas after starting that Zergling speed, which means he is interested in uh, getting tons of drones and probably taking a third, which it looks like that's exactly what he's doing, sending this drone over here. And we have MMA with a an SCV hanging out on this upper ground, but he is not going to be able to see that um, hatchery go down until the creep spreads out. So uh, good positioning on that, but maybe not the best use of a scout considering he cannot get any real information from it. And now we have... Uh, Looks like it's going to be uh, just starting on the uh, mining down here. We got more SCVs being built, and um, I heard I think the load up. No, we have uh, just everything uh, building up. So it's a fairly uh, fairly normal style of game. 
Zerg versus Terran. Two bases right now, a third base coming down for the Zerg. And we have Stimpak being researched, a bunch of Marines coming down. And I gotta say that MMA is looking very solid right now in his play. He is um, ahead one game, and he realizes that all he really has to do is play um, the strategy that was not able to be countered in the last game, and he will probably be able to win. This is one thing that I like a lot. He, um, instead of setting his wall off, instead of putting his supply depots everywhere, he set up a wall up right here as a secondary line of defense. Suppose somehow a huge number of Banelings make it in here and completely destroy this barracks wall, and he's forced to run up to in space. If he had supply depots all over the damn place, then he would not be in very good shape, but he could just run his Marines up there, lift up those depots, and hide behind there for another set of 400 plus one armor uh, wall which allows his Marines to go to town on any Zerglings or Banelings that are getting, trying to get up in his face. Now we have Dark Force morphing into the lair, finally getting his gas down, taking all four gases. He's got his third base in and his Zergling senses were tingling, able to take down that SCV that was hanging out on the top. And we have, um, we're probably gonna be looking to go into a Spire after this Baneling nest. We're gonna try again with the Zergling, Baneling, and uh, Mutalisk style of play, spreading this creep out across this map. He's gonna want to creep highway all the way across here in order to get that 30% bonus movement speed for his Zerglings and his Baylings. And MMA is producing um, his dropships. He has two already out on the way towards uh, Dark Force's base. And I think that Dark Force is completely in the dark about the fact that these are coming. Very, very much in the dark. This is gonna be trouble. There are a total of, it looks like 15 Marines hanging out in these in these uh, medevac, medevac with tons of energy. Stimpak is not quite completed. Stimpak is about to finish three game seconds left, and that's gonna make these Marines extremely powerful. Beautiful timing on that stim, and now they're in there, killing a couple of drones, and that queen is almost gonna go down. Spine crawler completely destroyed, and here come the Zerglings coming in, but great positioning on those Marines, hiding between the extractor and the min minerals, running around, doing so much damage. The medevacs are healing them away, and the queen actually trying to focus down the medevac, but not going to do it. Six hit points left, and these Marines are still alive. Alive. The majority of them survive going after the further spying pool. And no, they see the spire. They have spotted that spire halfway down, and that spire is not going to get the finish. Oh man, more Zerglings coming out. Bailing speed almost finished, but is that going to complete? Or is that Bailing that's going to go down? The uh, Marines are working on a stim pack going down. One medevac is taken out, and we'll see what happens. Zerglings are attacking the. Uh, oh no! And the Bailing nest goes down with Bailing speed nearly completed. That is huge. Making those Banelings roll around is extremely important for Zerg to deal with those Marines. Otherwise, even when they roll around, Marines can still kind of stim and kite them away. But if they can't roll, if they are just slow Banelings, then there is no chance for them to catch up in the hand when the Marines are in the hands of a good player, an S-quality player such as MMA. And even here now, killing a ton of drones, a ton of, ton of Zerglings. Great positioning behind those mineral eyes. He's even going to spot this Spire here, building up. And uh, looks like he has to force to lift up again as these Zerglings come in. This one poor Marine stuck between the minerals. He does not get lifted. But MMA, using that aggression, he is not spending all of his time on micro. As awesome as it was, he is macroing up an army. He's got his siege tanks up. He's got his siege mode about halfway done. Uh, should be ready soon. He's got more Marines holding this watchtower, trying to prevent the Zerg from getting any information, taking down these creep tumors as they uh, go forth. And the Spire is just finishing now, and Dark Force has a lot of minerals. He can produce a lot of gas, too. He can produce a bunch of uh, mutilists, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. It might be a little bit, it might be too little too late. Getting that Spire sniped down in the first place was a huge blow, and MMA is taking over uh, Dark Force's side of the map, killing these creep tumors. He's waiting for this creep to recede. And something to keep in mind is that the minute those creep tumors go down, you lose vision here. You still get speed for a while as this creep recedes, but you can see that dark spot on the minimap. You can see that dark spot here. Dark Force does not have vision of this creep, which is half of the benefit of the creep. So uh, remember that. Um, all you Terran players, all you Protoss players out there, if you have a creep tumor, Zerg has no, play, no idea where you are. You can move forward, you can move back, if they don't know. Keep that in mind. And now we have a nice little siege line setting up here, but they are possibly susceptible to a two-pronged attack, but no, those slow banelings are just too damn slow. The Marines cut them easily, barely have to stim, and that, I think, is a result of getting that baling that sniped in the first drop. Losing that baling speed, Bailey speed would have been so useful in this engagement, and instead all the Bailey was just completely destroyed. This Hatchery goes down, the Queen goes down, a lot of Zerglings coming in, but I don't know what Dark Force is going to be able to do. This is going to be trouble. We have MMA just really pushing in here. Medivac's hanging out, Siege Tank doing a lot of damage, but Siege Tank at the wrong time, getting killed by Zerglings. Queen getting destroyed, but this uh, Siege Tank is... Oh, 
still not going to go down. 15 hit points left, but there are more Marines pushing in. Siege Tank sitting up in his lower position, and it looks like that is going to be the end of that. Dark Force is forced to concede the game. MMA, too much pressure. The drop timing, I would have to say that that drop was the thing. That was the pitiful, pivotal moment that turned this game around, put it firmly in MMA's favor, and Dark Force would have had to do something crazy, something miraculous, gone for a huge advantage in order to get things back in his favor, but uh, we are gonna move on to game three.